Hello, uh, so uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about compensation. Uh, so last time, uh, ignore this op amp up here in this top right corner. Last time you, I showed you this guy with this capacitor load here. Um, that was 200, sorry, 25 picofarads. This would work fine if you're doing an LDO, uh, a low, uh, low dropout regulator. Uh, except the only problem is some of you guys don't want to have a fairly large cap out here. Um, as I showed you before, to check the phase margin, uh, you go to results, direct plot, main form, stability analysis, phase margin. So right now I have a phase margin of uh, 53, which is good. Uh, it's above 45. For an LDO, it's, uh, it's above 45. That's good. Um, you want to get closer to 60, that's fine. Um, also, remember for the loop gain, uh, you can select this. This probe right here is a zero volt probe. Uh, I showed you guys that in the previous video. Select magnitude and phase, say dB20 and plot. I'm already plotting it, it's right here. So I'm just shy of a gain of a thousand. Uh, so let me show you guys a few other ways to stabilize your op amp. So um, let's go back here. So Miller compensation, basically you place a cap across a gain stage and what ends up happening is that you can think of the cap as being divided into two caps where you have a large capacitance at the beginning of the gain stage that's about the gain times the capacitance value and on the outp output of the stage is about equal to that capacitance value. But there's a problem with this. So if I have uh, my first stage and this is my second stage, uh, sorry, let's look over here. So if this is my first stage of my op amp and then I put a compensation cap on my second stage, I'm actually introducing a zero. So uh, this zero uh, actually could cause problems um, in the feedback, pa uh, sorry, feed forward path. So uh, we are small signal going this way. So a way to eliminate that is there's a couple different ways. I'm going to show you two ways. Uh, you can do a source follower, or you can create a uh, pole here that will cancel the the uh, zero uh, that's formed by this capacitor, and I believe it's this GM that forms that uh, zero, if I remember correctly. Uh, I might be say, saying that wrong, but okay. Um, so. First, let me show you that you your phase margin goes negative. If so, I'm getting rid of this large load, and let's say for some reason I wanted to take the buffer, uh, this the output of the op amp to the left and drive another op amp. I don't have a very large load here, so let's see what happens with the phase margin. So I'm gonna run the simulation. And everything looks good. Uh, now what you'll notice, if we place a, a trace marker at approximately 0 dB, uh, that's close enough. We're at 289 megahertz. And if we go over to 289 megahertz, we have a phase margin of almost tw minus 23. Or if we go results, direct plot, main form, stability, phase margin, so minus 25. That's not very good at all. Uh, so we'll have some instability issues if we accidentally get into high, f if we get some high frequency content. So at the bottom here, I have three ways. Uh, I put the band gap reference in, in this box here. That was from the previous time. So my op amps here. There's a couple different ways we can uh, compensate for this. Uh, what we're doing here is we're adding uh, a. We're basically trying to do pole zero cancellation, um, and I I just messed around with the values until uh, uh, basically until. Uh, actually, I wonder. I should probably flip. No, that's okay. I messed around the values until I basically uh, 
uh, notice the phase margin increases until actually I think my phase margin on this guy is 94 which is huge so I can, I can still toy around with him a bit more um, so if we go to results direct plot main form phase margin we have actually it's 95 a phase margin 95 so this is actually really good phase margin the values I have here uh, I, I didn't try optimizing this or anything like that but the resistance value is 10 kilo ohms and the gap is 1 picofarad so this is a much smaller cap but that's still a pretty big resistor so you'll want to toy around with this 1 picofarad so that's 25 times smaller but I still got that fairly large resistance so an alternative the one that I, these are both source followers uh, this one right here is a PMOS source follower and this one right here is an NMOS source follower so I'll be using the NMOS source follower uh, basically I just use this uh, this VREF 0 right here it comes from uh, my uh, band gap reference I just used the same guy um, uh, uh, Basically, I used one of the transistors from the I'll just, uh, used one of the transistors from that uh, band gap reference, and then uh, this one is just a multiple. I messed around with this until I got a, a, a phase margin that I liked. Uh, actually, I originally aimed for about a phase margin of 90, and then what I did is then I reduced the capacitance until I got a phase margin of about 50. So right now, let's run it with this guy. And I double checked all the saturation, made sure everything was in saturation and stuff like that. You can watch this second video to see how to do that. Uh, so what you'll notice on the phase margin is it kind of scoots out a bit and then drops down, which is good. So if we go to result, direct plot, main form, stability, phase margin, right there 55.7 so the neat thing about this is my last method of of um, of moving around the uh, phase was I used the capacitor of one picofarad with 10 kilo ohms now if I look at this guy this is actually 400 femtofarads so before the original cap that I used was 25 picofarads. Now I'm using a 400 femtofarad cap. Now you're, you might be wondering what's the size of the guys in here. The transistors are very tiny. So what you've gained is basically um, let me show. I think I showed you the sizes already, but so uh, 3.6 micrometers by. 0.72 micrometers and the other one is just a multiple of three of that I didn't try to do any optimization or anything like that but the thing is is I've eliminated the feed forward pass so that helped a lot so uh, anyways this is how you do uh, basic compensation so the other thing though is is what uh, I wanted to state which is also important is uh, this method right here is giving me almost 100 kilohertz of bandwidth. Uh, this method that I tried with the PMOS didn't work out so well. I only got around 3.5. And this method with the pole zero cancellation gave me about 26 kilohertz. And my original plot, I don't remember, but we can run that really quick. Um, let's just um, move this over here. Let's give this guy a no connect and no connect I probably should just delete them but it's okay oops there we go so I'm gonna save that uh, and then actually this the capacitance on the op amp is so tiny that I'll just connect this guy directly and not remove it and let's see what the bandwidth was on this guy. So remember this is the capacitor that's 25 picofarads and our the gain is 93.3 or 90, 90 sorry 59.4 dB so we're looking for 56.4 for the 3 dB cutoff 56 
Uh, that's pretty close. So 18 kilohertz. So uh, with the this guy doesn't have the smallest bandwidth of all the compensation methods that I've shown you right now, but it, that is a huge cap. Uh, so the one that had the uh, the one with the NMOS here, I'll show you again one more time. I don't know why I copied. I should have just moved it. So remember, this one has 400 femtofarads. So you're talking uh, 20, 20, oh, well, uh, a lot, 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 lot smaller. Um, so let's run it this time with this guy. And then the transistors there are pretty small. So, you know, 25, easily 25 times smaller than the other method. And we are getting a bandwidth of 88.8 kilohertz. 88.8 kilohertz. So uh, you went from around, oh, what was it, 25? And now you're almost getting three times the bandwidth. And you have a nice and stable circuit. Once again, to show you results, direct plot main form, stability, phase margin. So I have phase margin of 55. And if I want to increase it, I could just slightly increase this cap a little bit. And I can get it to 60 very easily. Let me show you that. So let's, I think 500 Femto gives me phase margin of 60. And let's look at this right here. Results, direct plot, main form, phase margin. That's more than 60, so that's actually very good. So anyways, uh, since I've been aiming to around 50-ish, I will put that back to 400. And so the uh, if you aim for a phase margin of 60, if you do a step response on your op amp, it'll be a very smooth step response. If you aim for a phase margin of about 45, you'll see, you'll see a bit more, you'll see some oscillation, and then it'll eventually converge. Uh, but anyways, this is how you do op amp compensation for stability.